This week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. Head on over to patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast and subscribe today. Fans, founders, and insiders like you help us keep the Run, Eat, Drink podcast going. And we thank you for your support. This is Mepka Flesky and you're watching the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. Welcome to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We feature destination races from across the country. And after the race, we take you on a tour of the best local food and beverage to celebrate. So whether you are an elite runner or a back of the packer like us, you'll know the best places to accomplish, explore, and indulge on your next runcation. Hey, welcome to episode 199 of the Runny Drink Podcast. I'm your host, Amy. And I'm your co-host, Dana. This is the penultimate episode before we get to 200. And I would also like to say, I love that Meb Kofleski, silver medalist, winner of the New York City and Boston Marathons. Big deal. Big deal. Introduced us. And it's a throwback to when we were a video podcast yes. and we interviewed him via video right after running a half marathon at Gasparilla. Right after we were told in the middle of mile 12, 12 hey, Meb's ready. Let's, early. Move, let's move it up. Let's go. <laughs> no we problem. Have, we don't have we'll all day. Be there. So maybe someday we'll meet him again and we'll get him to do a stinger that says you're listening to now that we're an audio podcast. I, I would suspect he's such a nice guy. He would maybe have he'll do no it. No problem doing I, that for I, us. I don't know. I hope so. He's an inspiration. He, he recorded a special message for Jeff when he was recovering from his heart attack yeah. for us. I also dropped that one in because we are fast approaching I know. our return to the Gasparilla. I am not ready. And it's going to be a completely new race for us. Yeah. So that's coming up that, you uh-huh. know, I'm giving everybody a little preview, oh, yeah. a, little, a little inside baseball, sure. a little peek behind the curtain, if you will. If they go to runeatdrink.net, they can see our race calendar. Is that at runeatdrink.net where yeah. they can see the race calendar? Uh-huh. Okay. If you click on run. Nicely done. Yeah. <laughs> that was not planned. <laughs> and we did not mean to rhyme. Oh, gosh. All right. <laughs> we rhyme what did we just do i didn't i don't even i i know you'll hear it in the playback okay (laughs) so um (laughs) good news though we do have some pretty amazing stuff coming up on this week's episode and it has nothing to do with gasparilla but everything to do with the other race that's traditionally part of the treasured chest challenge sadly the treasured chest challenge is not not this year thing this year was not a thing however a thing you guys know we have talked about it a lot we have uh fundraised we have have touted it we love the donna marathon weekend that is one of our favorite race weekends probably arguably our favorite race weekend period it's hard for us to play favorites when we think of jeff galloway but he is a founder of the race so we love his race weekend we love this one and it's more an emotional tie for us yes. because we believe so passionately in what the Donna Foundation is doing. Yes. So we're going to be talking all about the first part of the Donna Marathon weekend because we spent several days there. Oh, yeah. And we did two 5Ks yeah. and a half marathon. We did. In that time that we, we were did. there. One of them was the social shakeout run that starts the weekend off, that kicks it off. Everyone's invited. Nobody has to register. There's not bling associated with it, but there are so many great connections to be made, old and new friends to see. It's wonderful. Absolutely. It's absolutely wonderful. So we're going to be talking about that run today on episode 199, Mm -hmm. and then Part of those connections you were talking about, our first weekend ever at the Donna, we met Mike and Andy Sharp, who we became fast friends with up there. They're both amazing people who have a great story of their own, but 
they work so hard at fundraising and dedicating to supporting the Donna Foundation. Shout out to the Bouncy Hunters, the, the group that they put together. Yeah, through the Bouncy Hunters. And um, she is the one who gave us the recommendation for the location we're going to be talking about for food and beverage this yeah. week. Yeah. It really pays to know some locals in a town. Yeah, I just wish I had consulted with them earlier because there are so many places that they told us about, some we did not have time to get to this no, year. No, we couldn't get to all of them. So we're just going to have to... Oh, no, we're going to have to have another return trip back to Jacksonville. Well, you know we would do it every year. Hey, not only that, I would do it as like a mid-year like road trip, just day trip up. Oh, to Jacksonville itself. Yeah, not absolutely. Even. We could grab a we could grab one of the fantastic metal chasers virtuals and go run it up there. Of course. No, well, they do races around uh, different parts of the year. They well, do the, I like was the also five k. The 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 mm. Gate River Run, which yeah. we have been told repeatedly we have to go and do, which is what the beginning of March, I believe. I believe. So. And we have yet to do that one. So don't threaten me with a good time, as you would say. Exactly. So we are going to be talking about a location that Andy specifically gave to us, although Mike, Mike endorsed. Oh, yeah. And that is, and I, I want to, I hope that I'm saying the name correctly. And that's Rev <laughs> Brewing. It's spelled R E V E. Yeah. Reeve. I think, are we going to go, what are we going to go with? I'm going to go with Rev. Rev. Because that's what she called it. Yes. So, who so am I to argue go. with the doctor? Here we go, yeah. Exactly. So, that's what we're going to be talking about this week, guys. And buckle up, it's going to be great. Yeah. And I think you're going to be really pleasantly surprised with, you know, just all the great content we got this week. And in the coming great stuff. Uh, couple of weeks around the Donna Marathon weekend. Mm -hmm. But before we get to that. Oh, yeah. I believe that we have some people who are important to us that we need to celebrate. Very important. They are part of the episode artwork this week. I haven't seen the episode artwork James yet. Gray sent me a picture of him with his fiance Ginger. And Aww. they're getting married, I think, this coming weekend. Or they will have gotten married by the time this episode by airs. By the time this episode airs, it was the previous weekend. If I understood what he wrote to us, what, the timeline. Mm -hmm. He included the picture, and maybe I'll post it separately on social media for the coming weekend. That, mm. or, or leading up to the episode when the episode airs, or after the episode. Sometime around the episode, I'm going to post a picture of him and his beautiful fiance who are getting married this month, and they look so happy in this picture. He means a lot to us because he was our first patron. He is. He's the person who kicked us in the rear. And we talked about this on, on last week's show. He's the person who kicked us in the, in the rear end to get moving on two, having a Patreon at all. So two years ago, we, we owe him a debt of gratitude and celebrate him as being a, a important part of keeping this podcast up and going. Mm -hmm. We also want to shout out a couple of our members of the Runcation Nation. Specifically on this episode because... They ran the social shakeout run that we're going to be talking about with us. They did. And that would be Dawn. Yay! Uh, she's changed her screen name. It's no longer Dawn B. Disney. It's she's changed... Oh, you're going back old school. Screen name, AOL. Oh, yes. Yeah, screen name. Throw, I'm sorry. Throwback. Her... her Instagram handle, handle, excuse me, as the cool kids say, the it's, Insta. It used to be a, a Don B. Disney, and now it's Don B. Joyful. Don B. Joyful. And Josh yeah. Osborne ran the social shakeout run with us that morning. Mm -hmm. And what a great time indeed. They helped us kick off the Donna Marathon. We are so proud of them for and thankful for them coming oh. and hanging out with us that weekend. Yes. I we had a great, great weekend of meetups. Believe it. I can't believe it. And I love that we were there. We'll get to that as we start to talk about the, the beginning of the weekend. Mm -hmm. But I love we were all able to be there on Thursday night to kick off the whole thing. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you want a shout out on the show. For you or someone else that you love. Email us. Type it out in a t Type it out. 
and we'll read it. Old school. Or you could attach an audio recording. Ooh. We could play it. We would love that. And make your voice famous. Send that to us at info at runeatdrink.net. That's info at runeatdrink.net. Or you can call us and leave us a voicemail that we could play. Even older school. At 941-677-2733. That's 941-677-2733. You could even just call us and leave us a message to say hi if you wanted to. But Absolutely. That's, that's where we look for shout outs. We look for shout outs if you're on social media and you tag us at, at Runny Drink Podcast on Facebook and Instagram or at Runny Drink Pod on Twitter or if you hashtag your post Runcation Nation, we look for those things so that we can shout them out at the beginning of each show. So let's talk running, mm, shall we? Yeah. I got to tell you, this is one of my favorite low key, low stress, high energy events that we do. The social shakeout run every mm-hmm. year has us converge on the coolest little coffee shop. Yes. In Neptune Beach, if Atl- I'm not mistaken. Atlantic Beach, Neptune Beach area. It's right on the cusp. It's mm-hmm. literally, literally yeah. as you trot down the road, you cross over from one to the other. And I, I've got to double check, but it's it's Southern Grounds. In, oh, it's Neptune Beach. Yeah. So Southern Grounds is this awesome little boutique coffee shop with a great kitchen. Yes. And they've got... Nice little seating inside. They've got great outdoor seating as well. But this kind of becomes the hub of activity. And you you all converge. You'll get coffee. You hang out. You hit a restroom. And as you're you there. You hit a restroom. Uh, I absolutely. love how you include that in I the list. Throw that in. But then while you're there, oh, look, there's Donna Deegan. Oh, look, there's Amanda Napolitano. Oh, look, there's Jeff Galloway. And and some years you get Olympians. Well, Joan, Jeff is an Olympian. I know. I, but I, like you get other other Olympians, Olympians like Joan Benoit Samuelson. Fine. Other Olympians. Oh, can I back up and talk about Thursday night before the social shakeout run, or can we talk about that at some point? Of course. Let's talk about what we did to prepare. Well, I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't mean to interrupt your beautiful introduction of the social shakeout run, but I just have to say, it was fantastic that we had all these members of the Runcation Nation. Jojo and Susie, Josh, Dawn, and her husband, Mark. We had just everybody who was running races, except for Jessica and Kelly, who couldn't make it until Friday, who couldn't drive up until Friday. But it was great to have so many of them arrive on Thursday night and come to our hotel and have just a little informal get-together. Yes, the nice little poolside reception, hang out, have very pink colored beverages and just and from pink glasses mm. or, or I should say cups. They are not glass. Not they are glass. plastic cups. Yes. Like um, solo cups, if you will. In spite of the cooler temperatures that were already starting to happen while we were out there. And we were lucky there was no rain, but it was just it was very nice. Dawn brought us king cake. Bought us king cakes, multiple plural. flavors. Multiple pl- yeah, and JoJo brought us everybody on the team bib boards. Yes, with our logo for the weekend. The Runny Drink Podcast logo, the the mm-hmm. pink version. Mm-hmm. Super cool, and I loved that she she did that as a gift for everybody who was running virtually or in person at this this weekend that is so special to our podcast and to us. Mm -hmm. It was just nice to be able to have a toast with everybody, talk with everybody, get a photo, actually be able to meet everybody in person. And I was going to say meet face to face up until that point, several people we had not met. Although it feels like we had. I was going to say, and we talked about this in the group because we we had our poolside get together. Then some of us stuck around and we ended up going to the restaurant in the hotel for a little while. Mm-hmm. It, it's just, it, it, we're strangers, but we're not. And yeah. that is something I think that this community that has started springing up around runcationing is, is so great because mm. people are getting to know each other 
through the show and getting to know each other through our social media channels and they're supporting each other and they're going and running with each other even when it's not a race we're going to and they're they're reporting back to us telling us about their event and what they did and where places they saw yeah it's so cool and I love it. we got to finally have some time uh, with a group and we've we've had one offs We've been sure. very fortunate to be able to do that you know, with individuals, Yes, but this was our first time as a group and the whole group really gelled, which was yeah. great. It was a great time. So I didn't mean to derail your introduction of the amazing event that is free and open to everybody that kicked off the Donna Marathon weekend proper. Oh, which is the social shakeout run at Southern Grounds, which is an amazing coffee shop with wonderful food and beverage. We've covered their food and beverage on the show before. Oh. It's that good. Mm. And I, I their fresh breakfast is unbelievable, regardless of which way you go. And mm-hmm. you can go sweet, you can go savory, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And and we actually did after the run get some some food there this time. It was delicious. But you you cannot go wrong with anything you get there. Yeah. So. Like you said, meeting up there, seven, eight o'clock on Friday, it was really great to have Dawn and Josh with us so that they could actually meet Amanda Napolitano, the executive director from the Donna Foundation, Mm -hmm. and to meet members of the D-Squad. They are the ambassadors for the Donna Marathon Weekend who work so hard to promote and encourage and Keep recruit the energy up. and inspire. And I think that, that this is an especially important year for the D-Squad because mm. this is that first year back from races being shut down due to the pandemic. They were working extra hard mm-hmm. and making sure that this event went off without a hitch. And and I should say that, that people yes. kept their interest and energy up and came mm-hmm. and then the organizers and the volunteers and the the other you know employees made sure that the event went off without a hitch they they had challenges they had no control over weather and plane plane delays temperature and, and storms and things but it didn't derail their spirit and their dedication and they just are amazing people andy and the bouncy hunters and the d squad are just they work so hard and you can see the passion that they have for this weekend and for the foundation. Oh, absolutely. So it, it's great to be there with them and to see it up close, especially after two years. It's been it's been two years. Yeah. Hard to believe. Away. And we we know it's no secret that People who are fans of our podcast, we're going to go to this race weekend every year. We're going to recap it every year because I think that there are unique stories to tell every year. 100%. And another thing that I really like about this event is this gets you in the spirit, getting a chance to hear a message from Donna herself. It was great to have her there. And she's there every year. And, and she's, she's just, she talks about being the, the, the chief, what is it? chief, chief optimist. eternal optimist instead of when, uh, as CEO that comes through when you listen to her speak. Yeah. And then while we're there, there was a company that did a presentation of a check. Mm-hmm. So they were getting donations and, and it's just wonderful to see the community support, the corporate support individuals, of course, everybody who's registered for races is supporting yeah. you know, by through their registration. So it's just fantastic. And we got to hear from, from Donna, we got to hear from Amanda Mm-hmm. And of course, we got to hear from Jeff. And I think they were all emotional, full of just happiness and positivity and just overwhelmed at the support that they saw. Yeah, I think that you don't know until you know when you've had an event get canceled. Oh. And you see the registration numbers, you go, okay. But until you get there the day of and you start seeing, and by the way, like you said, this is an informal thing. This is not something you have to register for. You're not paying for the the social social shakeout. This is just, Hey, we're doing this if you want to come. And a lot of people do. It's, it's a, it's a great, great time. And for them to see the amount of support that they were going to get 
And mm. for us to be able to do it together was fantastic. And it was really, it was not a timed 5K. It was really just through the neighborhoods that we would see again on the, on the half marathon and marathon courses. And it was, it just got us in the spirit. We saw people out there walking their dogs. We saw people out there getting in their cars, heading to work because it was that time of morning on a Friday. Mm -hmm. We got to see the beautiful Jacksonville beach and that scenery the people all around us, Andy riding her bike and taking video that she would post later mm -hmm. on social media and seeing it was an out and back course. So seeing people coming, coming back, waving and just the, the knowing nods and smiles. And it was just, there was such a great palpable feeling of positivity. Absolutely. In the air. Yeah. And we were lucky. This morning was cool. It was breezy. Mm. It was sunny. It was not. And that was rain. that was the last time we were going to get sun for the race weekend. Yeah. Little did we know, which was great for the race conditions. It was great for when we actually uh, afterwards we went out and took a walk out onto the beach to beautiful to inadvertently put our feet in the Atlantic. <laughs> Always bring two pairs of shoes. That's all I'm saying. It, yeah, when the tide's coming in, it's it's not stopping for anybody. Not for my shoes. We may have gotten a little too close when the tide was coming in, but they did dry out. So they did, and the the thing that I thought was most uh, striking about this year, and you may you may think differently. Normally, this area where we're at, right there in, in Neptune Beach, that first intersection, just as you as you turn left out of out of Southern Grounds, uh -huh. that next intersection with the roundabout yeah. is normally the intersection where the start line is, start finishes, and the the Runners Village yes. is in the parking lot directly to your right. Mm -hmm. This year, the race course for the five k, the half. And the full, well, actually the, the race courses, all of them were moved except for the social shakeout run. Yeah. So none of that stuff was there. And no. it was a little weird. Like you're there, like they had all the banners in town for on the light poles for the Donna. Yes. So they had all that. Yeah. So the support was there, but then you're like, oh man, I'm used to seeing a lot of apparatus here and it wasn't. So it was just odd. Mm. That took me aback a little bit. But it was still the same, the people and the the tone that was set before we headed out, mm -hmm. that it still carried through that whole positivity and, oh, and yeah. the people that you meet and the, the love that you feel and joy for everybody to be returning. That was amazing. Oh, Absolutely. So, so that was the only thing that was just like, I thought was strikingly different was like not seeing all that stuff. But other yeah. than that, I mean, yeah, the, the feel, the vibe, oh, the vibe is always so much fun mm. and relaxed. And when you're, when you're at the race and or when you're there in the morning before everybody's having coffee and getting warm. And then afterwards, uh -huh. a lot of people plop down and grab breakfast and, and all that. And then Donna hangs out for a little while. Amanda hangs out. Jeff hangs out. It's just you see Barb and Jeff together. Yeah, and then they eventually have to leave because they're going to go over to the expo. But yeah, you know, just just nice to be able to relax in a very non. You're not worried about your time. You're not no. worried about getting swept, which mm -hmm. you're never worried about, Donna. No, but it's it's just so much fun. This is just a great way to ease into a challenge weekend. Yes, I think. Mm -hmm. Or any races that you do, even if you don't do a challenge, if you do a single race, the half or the full or, or the ultra or the ultra. We're looking at you, ultra runners. Ooh. Ooh, ho, ho. There aren't that many of them, but they make up no. for it. And they had a rough year this year with the weather, Ooh. but they made it through. And I think, I think the, the Diz runs podcast had the winner and she was on their, on their show talking about oh, awesome. the experience, which was great. It was a great start 
to the weekend. Yeah. Now I do one thing I like about this course, this does take you, like you said, through those, those neighborhoods right along Jacksonville or the it's, it's Neptune beach. And what's the next Atlantic. one? Atlantic beach, mm. Neptune and Atlantic beach. That's referred to as the beaches of Jacksonville. There is actually a Jacksonville beach proper. Mm. So, so we're in kind of like a suburb beach town. The, you are literally one house away from the Atlantic ocean. It's beautiful. Uh, these are, these are houses that have the Atlantic as their backyard. Mm. and you, mm. we we get you get to you get to peek through as you're running and then at the end we just walked over and, and went out to the beach and what a great time we did we we you know trudged down through the sand running shoes on and we got too close and then the the, the tide came in and caught us we had to like it was coming quick and we didn't realize just how fast it was coming because we were taking photos <laughs> but it was great though it was a good time a lot of fun and then once, once we finished with that, we got some breakfast over there or brunch, mm -hmm. brunch, brunch, breakfast or brunch huh. over at Southern Grounds. And like we said earlier, it never disappoints. Mm. But then we went to the expo. Oh, yeah. <coughs> we were hot to trot to go see what the new expo experience was going to be. It was out at the fairgrounds at Jacksonville Fairgrounds. And you said going over there that when we arrived and we, we got out, we started walking to where the building where the expo was set up. Mm -hmm. We're like, when you think of fairgrounds, you don't really think of this. No, no, th there are fairgrounds in Jacksonville or in the middle of downtown. Yeah. There, there are stones throw from stadium? the, from the Jaguar stadium. Yeah. They're ac diagonally across the street from Maxwell house coffee and I mean, intuition and intuition. Ale works. Ale works. It's, it's, it's a, it's a very convenient placement. It's just a little strange because when I think of fairgrounds, I think of you, you might have an expo hall and then you might have a very large fairgrounds, like actual open of, area. I don't even think of, of an expo hall at fairgrounds. I think of like, here's your food and beverage stand. <laughs> here's restrooms. I, I guess I think of the expo hall only because, uh, we used it so much growing up in Tampa at the at the Florida State Fair, and they would always have something in the expo hall, and and I just never experienced that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really I, I liked that it was down there at the fairgrounds, and when you came in, there was a big display of balloons with the iconic ribbon the iconic pink ribbon set up and you could take a photograph with it pink ribbon with the little arms and legs like it's running and there were people that were guiding you to where uh, there were two separate rooms there was a bib pickup room bibs and shirts and everything uh, all the gear pickup yes and then there was the expo in in the larger room I so, thought that was very smooth. Mm -hmm. I thought that you start over where you have them scan your little QR code and look up your bib number and get your shirts and your little bag, your tote to carry everything, and then funnel you into the room where there were three or four rows of expo booths set up. Yeah, the the expo itself had a very good variety of vendors. Oh, yeah. They actually had a few vendors I was a little surprised at, things that just absolutely had nothing to do with running. But they had standard ones. Jeff had a booth, and so you could meet all the pacers and find out what the run-walk-run ratio for the different pace groups was going to be. Yes. And get comfortable with that and ask Jeff any questions. The D-Squad... And members of the Donna Foundation had a booth set up so that you could get more information about them and see the medals for the weekend. Which was great, having the medals displayed like that with mm -hmm. the running shirts. They went with a, a bit of a retro styled on the running shirts. Yeah. The, the medals themselves, though, they did an amazing job on the bling this year. They always yeah. do. Which we'll talk about when we talk about the 5K and the half and just just incredible design work. I also, they, they did have plenty of sports medicine places and they chiropractic had, massage. Yes. It, actually giving massages. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to get a massage while you were there, Boulder athletic wear had a booth. Uh, there was also a sunglass a place for sunglasses. One more mile had typical running goose gels, gloves, or 
calf sleeves, compression wear. So literally, if you lost your bag oh. in all of that travel yeah, nightmare luggage. that was it's happening luggage. because yeah. there was this ma- massive front coming through the United States. Mm. If you'd have lost your running gear, you literally could have re-equipped yourself here. There were even sneakers there. There, there was a, a full-fledged shoe store set up there. Yeah. They had everything. Yes. A shout out to Squoosh Bands. Yes. John Fournier had a booth set up. There was a booth set up in the center with actually with older previous gear bags, previous gear from other years, years. V- other, other vintages of Donna gear posters. They were it, it ingenious. Maybe, maybe you missed a year. Maybe you lost something. Maybe, maybe you just wanted to get a little piece of Donna history. Mm-hmm. You had the opportunity and they had all these things set up, all these bins. Yeah. Like you said, shirts, posters, gear bags, for free. Yeah. Basically, they, they have had, it in a warehouse, and they don't want to. They don't want to, well, you know, store it anymore. And I totally understand it. And, sure. And why not? I we use the heck out of our running bags that we oh, yeah. get at expos. Mm-hmm. The not, drawstring running bags, not the cheap plastic, clear plastic ones. We're talking about no, no. like the nylon running backpack, backpack looking, thing. Yes. We use those all the time around here. We do. We do. And then, of course, there was a part of that whole booth in the center of the expo hall that was set up where you could come and complete. You could grab a survivor bib if you're a survivor or if you're running in honor of somebody who's fighting or in memoriam, you could fill out and I'm running for bib. Yeah. And wear that in addition to your race number. Yes. And then they also had some premium gear there Mm -hmm. as well, which I thought was really cool for this year. Mm. And they really made some nice selections. They have have a great, look like a, like a, either a a windbreaker or a rain jacket by Nike that had a custom Donna logo embroidered. Yeah. They had some custom golf stuff, like a Donna golf shoe bag for your golf shoes when you're traveling. They had had some, some really nice stuff. We picked up some socks. Some knee we, socks. We did. Where are they? I forgot them. I washed them and I have them in our sock drawers. Respectively. Excellent. Okay, so, good. <laughs> yes. So we can wear them at any time. I don't know if they're running socks, but. They're pink Argyle. And they, they were a must. Yeah. They were a must. Yeah. Those, I'll, those, will get, those will get mileage even without being running socks. Yes. So the expo had a lot of useful gear as well as great informational booths. My favorite part in saying, as we're coming to a close with the expo talk, my favorite part was the mile markers. Yeah. They changed them up this year. Yeah. Um, Normally they have these boards. We've talked about these before. They're like huge. Yeah. They're about eight feet tall, about four feet wide, Mm. really big, really heavy. And they they were not mile markers. These were put along the race course, I want to say at mile 12 mm-hmm. to get everybody, or mile 12 or mile 25. I think they split them, if I remember. Toward the end of what would be the, the half and the full. The, yeah, like the last round. mile mm-hmm. of the race, they'd put them out. Mm-hmm. You're, you're right. And that way it would keep you moving, keep you going, give you that that burst of energy in the last mile of what you're running for. And these boards were big, they were pink and they had an inspirational word. Hope, strength, love, courage, those kinds of words. And every year we would go and we would sign one of the boards Mm -hmm. and I'd sign one, Amy'd sign one. And a lot of times it was a message to my mom and this year they changed it up. And I think it was really smart. I, I, I don't know if it was on purpose because of the weather or if it know. was a, a, a change for cost. If it the, was because of the weather, then they turned that on a dime and happened really fast. And they did a great job. Yeah. Normally what they do for mile markers at Donna is they have basically these big cherry picker trucks. Like a Rain looking deal almost. And the banner is probably 12 to 16 feet tall. Super 
high. And it's hanging the banner and they've got it, you know, anchored at the bottom and it's anchored at the top and this thing's elongated. This year at the Donna, you would not have been able to do that. I think the winds would be really dangerous. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that on next week's episode. But we had sustained winds of over 20 miles an hour and gusts approaching 40 on the race course. So that probably wouldn't have worked. But what they did this year was so smart Mm. and they were sandwich boards. So, yeah. And they, they were, I don't know if they were plastic or wood, but they had a, a, a writable surface. And on that writable surface was the mile marker professionally done. And then you could write and sign the mile marker. And there was a word like they had in those previous signs, like love and hope and courage and strength. And it was wonderful because whenever, now we, we knew that whenever we would encounter a mile marker, we could see messages of hope. Yeah. And you could you could dedicate a mile to a person. Mm-hmm. So maybe you have more than one person in your life who's been affected by breast cancer. Mm. Um, it, gave you, it gave you great options for that. And to be able to see that along your race course, I just think was amazing. And they had 26 of those yeah. lined up. Yeah. And, and they had Sharpies at each one. And by the end of it, when you saw the, the signs out on the course, they are just packed with Covered. these messages. Mm-hmm. And it was just, I thought that was a great touch. I find it to be an improvement. I hope they personally. do it again. I hope they do it again. I don't know if it was cost cutting because they were afraid of how this year was going to go. I don't, I don't I, think so. I don't know, but I hope they keep that. I re- Amanda, if you're listening keep it oh. that i think was just a really great touch i loved it yeah yeah so yeah it's a preview of what we would see on the half marathon and marathon courses and then last thing i would say about the about the expo the, the, that location is fantastic i like for it. parking and you basically Indeed. you you have ample parking all paved mm. attended well marked very secure I have no issues with that at all. In previous years, because they were trying to do the expo down on the beaches, they were very limited as to places that they could go that were a large enough venue. They've lost one venue completely because it was an abandoned Kmart. Kmart. And then it, it was condemned, had to be knocked down. Yeah. And then the other one was a, like a Shriners Temple. Mm-hmm. And you're at their mercy as far as can you book it. And, or not. Yeah. Or not. And then and talking with, with some of the folks there, hotels are not really l- jumping at big events yet. No, because of COVID. So they are just, you know, they're, they're very kind of hands off on that. Mm. This worked out beautifully. And it also puts you in great proximity to a brewery we've talked about on the show before. <gasps> Can't recommend highly enough intuition ale works. I love it. And yeah, it's mm. just a, it, 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 it's a, I thought it was a great expo experience. Yeah. So the social shakeout run and the expo Friday events at the Donna marathon weekend we were winning. Yes, 100%. Mm. But as you know, once we run, it's time to eat and drink. Of course. And we were still hungry after all that expo walking and all of the emotional social shakeout run. And, doing. This is, and it's, it is emotional. This is an emotional weekend for, it is for me. Yes. I know that it was for a lot of our, our Runcation Nation folks oh, yeah. who were there. Yeah. And and that is on top of the exert physical exertion you're gonna experience. So very much so. You've got to eat to maintain your your energy and your ability to to be in it you know, emotionally as well as physically. Yes. So we were talking with Andy Jeez, and Mike great. and they recommended Rev Brewing. What a wealth of Good recommendations. Yeah. Mm. And we headed over there as a group and we ended up having, I think, some absolutely really surprising but fantastic food from a brewery. It was delightful. And it's Rev. We're going to call it Rev. Because Andy called it rough. They may have to correct us. They may have to correct us. And you can write in at info at runningdrink.net. Or you can call us at 941-677-2733. Record a message with the correct pronunciation. And please. we will play it 
and have a retraction deal if we need to. <laughs> but <laughs> but for the food part, it's Rev Brewing, but it's Bones Pizza inside. Mm-hmm. So that is what we're talking about in terms of the food. Fantastic pizza, appetizers, and desserts. Mm. Oh, okay. Friends. We were with a bunch of members of the Runcation Nation who got amazing looking food. We're going to talk about what we had. Yes. We started with an appetizer called the house bread, which was rosemary, Parmesan, sea salt. And I could have had a bigger, I could have had a whole bowl instead of a ramekin <laughs> of the house pesto dipping sauce, to be honest. I am I am such a sucker for good pesto. Oh. I, I love a good pesto. I and, loved it. And this was perfect as far as the saltiness, the, the herbaceousness, the yeah. cheesiness, the... <sighs> The fresh olive oil. Oh yeah, um, yeah. What what is there to say about the bread? It, it was so crispy on the edges, and there were parts that were you could tell that they had been crisped in the oven so well. But then softer parts when you break into that whole, it looked like a calzone almost. Yeah, but yeah, it I actually did. But it didn't have anything inside it. Right, it's just it's bread. Oh, but it had that shape. And it was so good. It was so warm. I was going to say everything came out Ugh. piping hot. Like it was, it was sometimes you'll have food. It'll sit, it gets out of the oven. It'll sit for a couple of minutes on the, on the counter while they wait for a food runner. It did not appear that that was the case at all. It came out piping hot. Our photos of the food are gorgeous. Make me hungry looking oh. at it. This Are bread, you kidding? This reminds me in such an upscale way. And the, by, and by the way, the, the brewery does not give you an upscale vibe. It's very down to Way earth in back. there, but very yes. cool. And a little bit, a little bit off the beaten path. They, they are, they, they do everything is an homage to Lewis Carroll and Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Rabbit and hole. it's all about going down the rabbit hole and, and white rabbit and rabbits are everywhere throughout their decor. Throughout Love it. All their tap handles have a white rabbit head on them. They're super odd and cool. And I, I just, I love Unique. very, I, I love the yeah. vibe of this place and their bar. Their bar has like really older looking woodwork with a, like a big mirror back backsplash. Oh yeah. Oh, it was just, it was a neat, neat space, but the bread, <sighs> this takes me in an upscale way back to childhood because really? my mom f would feed an army of kids in the neighborhood and she would get crazy bread all the time. Oh, okay. Bags of crazy bread from the okay. little Caesars. Okay. And again, is that's certainly not upscale by any stretch, but it's that, it's that kind of the same concept. So it's just like an elevated, very much. Yeah. Elevated experience based on that. Yeah. So your it, it was reminiscent of my childhood and it was nice to get something while I was there that reminded me of my mother. Oh, this is just, and I didn't talk about it a lot when we were there. Cause we had a whole crew of people and I told yeah. them, I said, y'all are going to see a fat guy cry several times this weekend. And they saw it at least once, but it, yeah, this, oh, she, she's showing me the photo. Here I'm, now. I'm serious. We're talking about it. I read the description. We can look at the photos <sighs> and listen, we didn't even talk about the Caesar salad that we had either. No, we split a Caesar salad. We split a Caesar salad and we split that bread and I loved that the Caesar salad was just covered in the cheese. I love that they use the, the way that they get the cheese like that, depending on where you go and what kind of Caesar you get. Sure. A lot of times you will get whole planks of, of the shaved well, you Parmesan. Get, you get the shaved or... Parmesan. You'll get whole pieces of, of lettuce. Oh, of like Romaine. Yeah. They chopped the lettuce here mm -hmm. and they did the very fine spirally shavings of cheese on this, almost oh. like snow dusting the, the salad. Yes. And it enabled you to get a little bit of dressing and a little bit of cheese in every bite. And I loved that. And a lot of people will say, I don't want it drowning in dressing. My preference always is yes for a Caesar salad. Well, you have to have, I don't think you can do an undressed Caesar salad. You have to have dressing on a Caesar. Mm. Um, and it had bread with it. And it had the strangest garnish I've and ever it, seen on a Caesar salad. Well, it was hard boiled eggs. I've never, or, or 
Yeah, perfectly done hard boiled. These those yeah. yolks were almost soft. They were just shade past. Mm-hmm. And cold chilled and they and, and then the and then they soft bread to accompany the salad instead of the instead of croutons. So I loved the anchovy, the essence of anchovy and just the lemony dressing that that we had in this set. It was fantastic salad. Yeah. And then of course, and you know, huge, this is splittable. Yeah. I think it was more than enough to have the house bread and the Caesar, but we couldn't stop. No, we were, if we were doing a light lunch, that would have been perfect right there. Yeah. But it was more like a lunch dinner kind of thing. We, yeah, we basically were we doing did. like, like a combination lunch and dinner. Yeah. So we decided to go all out and we also grabbed a pizza. Yes. And mm. this is their prosciutto fig pizza. Okay. <gasps> number one, I love figs. I love figs fresh. Oh yeah. I love fig jam and I love dried figs. So I, I'm on board You're when in. you say fig and I love prosciutto ham. Yeah. So this has extra virgin olive oil, <laughs> mozzarella, fig, red onion, prosciutto, mm. criminy mushrooms, goat cheese, arugula, and a balsamic glaze drizzled over uh, it. Yes. To all of it. This pizza. All of it. Is fancy, <laughs> but it's so good. It's, and I expected like the prosciutto maybe to be crispy. So I'm not sure if they cooked the pizza. I didn't ask. They cooked the pizza and then they laid the, the arugula and the prosciutto and, and then the balsamic glaze after, after the cooking. They did. Which I think it made a difference. It did. Oh, absolutely. We've had, we've had cooked prosciutto from nice guys pizza. Yeah. That, that's what I was expecting. One way to do it. Yep. But this one here gave you that juxtaposition of hot and cold. Mm -hmm. Prosciutto has this wonderful saltiness to it. It does. That I, I mm. absolutely love. And there's a little bit of a funk to it that uh, regular like black forest ham doesn't give you. Yeah. It's different. And I, I, I think it paired with fig or melon. And in this case it's fig. I love that fig because it's got that I I it's like a sugary texture when you bite into a fig. It's little seeds. Like it's little seeds, I but love it's that. like but it it mimics like a sugary things if you had, had like um, sugar crystals. Sugar crystals in your mouth. Yes. Yes. Hundred percent. And the saltiness from the prosciutto and the balsamic was just a little bit tart and sweet. And and the crust was soft, yet crisp. Very similar to the house bread. We we absolutely had a winner of a pizza here. Yeah. The those mixture of flavors mm. and textures and that hot and cold thing that's going on there, mm -hmm. I think just made this one an absolute winner. Oh, and I, we didn't mention the earthiness of those criminy mushrooms either. Oh yeah, you know, that was different than some other pizzas that have that balsamic fig. Maybe even like a pear. Oh, pear would have been really nice too. Mm -hmm. And that also has that little sugary kind of yeah. textural yeah. component. So yeah, it's okay. not as gritty though. But I look, I am a big fan of goat cheese. Oh, it is so, so funky I, and you put that creamy. You put that there, and you've got that that tart element, and everything else just complements. You get that the tart of goat cheese, the yeah. salt of that ham. Mm. Yeah. So good. Needless there. to say, guys, we love this place. Yeah. And there were other pizzas that you could have. Dawn, Dawn and her husband had a pepperoni pizza that looked amazing. And we talked about that with them at the, at the table. We're uh -huh. like, yeah. And they were very complimentary of it. Mm -hmm. And we were saying how we always view pepperoni pizza as the barometer, the barometer Pure. of a pizzeria. Yeah. We also looked at Josh's food. Oh, he had Josh well, he, got this this He had a different starter than we did. It was crazy. It had uh, a whole head of roasted, roasted garlic. Garlic, warm brie, fig chutney and flatbread. Oh. Oh. Looks so good. And I'm just I 
Oh, there's, they call them seven minute eggs on that Caesar salad. Did you know that? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, now we know. No, we know. But, and, but at any rate, everything up to this point on the menu, phenomenal. And then we got dessert. We did. We got dessert because we couldn't help it. And their dessert, it didn't make any sense when we read it. I had no. to go up and ask and they explained it. And I'm uh-huh. like, give us one. Give us one because, and I was so glad that Don had one with me so that we could experience it together. Indeed. (laughs) So I got a cone and she got a cone and it is chocolate, coconut, peanut butter made with barrel aged Imperial stout. Yep. Ice cream. Served in a waffle cone. And those are not individual flavors. They're together. It's, it's a combination chocolate, coconut and peanut butter mix in the ice cream which was 7% ABV. Let's say that again. 7% ABV. The ice cream the is. The ice cream. Not the not the beer, the ice cream. The ice cream. Because it's made with the barrel-aged Imperial Stout. Yes. So it's a, yeah. <laughs> and what did you think of it? I know you all said the texture. It's it not an ice cream. wasn't if perfect. No, if you're expecting an ice cream texture, don't. More like soft serve. I was going to say frozen yogurt or ice milk, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And more chocolate, not as much peanut butter or coconut, I thought. Yeah, you let me taste it. I didn't get a ton of coconut off of that. No. And I, that, I, I don't. That, if you hadn't told me, I don't even know that I would have picked up on it. I don't know. Peanut butter I got, but not like a... I didn't get a whole lot of that either. I didn't get that like... Chocolate. If you're telling me chocolate and peanut butter, I'm thinking Reese's Cup. Yeah. And, and this did not taste like a Reese's cup to me. And I was envisioning like little bits of peanut butter or peanut butter chips in it. Oh, but that I want your ice cream now. But yeah. That but sounds it, great. Or like coconut shavings on the top and then like little peanut butter globs inside of it. But I don't know how complicated that is because I've never really made ice cream in my life. So <laughs> I would just tell you it was more like a chocolate frozen yogurt consistency. But it was a little boozy. So just saying. But would you get it again? Eat responsibly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's and all I'm saying. There you have it. And we've given you something now that's 7% ABV. And we haven't even gotten to the drink portion yet. No, we have not. <laughs> but listen, before we go on to the drink portion, we do want to tell you about the brand new levels that we have for you to check out on Patreon.com. Slash Run Eat Drink Podcast. And they're also on Podbean to give you more of what you love from the Run Eat Drink Podcast. And if you're looking for a way to support our show. Yep. Of course, we have Fan Founder and Insider. Those are our classic levels. Those do not go away or change in any no. way, shape, or form. But what we've introduced are three new patronage levels above that to give you an elevated experience called Accomplish, Explore, and indulge indulge yeah and those levels get all of the benefits of the insider plus some really cool elevated things that you're just going to have to go and check out because I, <laughs> I, they're so elevated i don't know that i can talk about them here okay. so go to patreon.com slash runny drink podcast or click on the button in at the top of the Podbean player on your phone yes. to check out those levels. They're the same no matter where you are. And we also want to take a minute to say thank you so much to Jojo, who upgraded her patronage level from Insider to Accomplish. So we have our very first patron at the Accomplish level. Thank you, Jojo. And shout out to Susie as well, who went from a fan to a founder level. Awesome. And got her name in lights for the first time on runnydrink.net. Yes, we have our very own patron wall up there where we celebrate you guys. But uh, last but certainly not least, we want to thank Josh. Josh went from insider to the highest level of patronage, the indulge level. We look forward to having you on the show, my friend, to celebrate your anniversary at the indulge level. I'm looking forward to that. So thank you all so much for your support. All of you said you did it because you appreciate the Runcation Nation community that we've all created. We couldn't do the show without you or your support. And we hope you all enjoy the benefits that we're providing. Yeah, because listen, the show itself (laughs) is always going to be free. 
this is just a way to give you guys more of what you love. And if you want more, become a patron at patreon.com slash running drink podcast. Thank you again to all of you in the Runcation Nation for all of the very many, many ways that you support the Runny Drink Podcast. Let's talk drinking. Now we can say that it's Rev. Rev. Reeve. Rev. Rev. We're going with Rev. We're going with Rev. It's Rev Brewing and the original beers that we had or something ever so unique as well. Since we got alcoholic ice cream for dessert. Yeah, we had beer, but we also had a beer slushy. <laughs> Let, let's go through my beer before you tell me about the okay. the strange awesomeness yeah. that was your beer slushy. Okay. I had one that the the name attracted me, and this was called Spirals in Hyperspace. How did I not know? I just I didn't I knew it. I just felt you would you get knew something this was like the one yes, I was going to get? yes. Yeah, this uh, clocks in at 6% ABV. This is a combination of El Dorado, HBC 630, and Laurel or Laurel, Laurel? hops. I don't even know. And this is a, a juicy, hazy IPA. And I got to tell you, I enjoyed this. This was very, very drinkable. Did not kill me on the on the hop factor it did not make me go oh my gosh what was i thinking i i i got really nice notes of of lemon i got nice notes of grapefruit i didn't get so much pith that at the end i'm like yeah it's just bitter it, it wasn't this was really drinkable great with the pizza yeah and and i th- i think that was really nice and and at six percent I was expecting a heavier body beer and it, oh. it, it really wasn't. It was a light to medium. Okay. This was, uh, while I, it's probably a little too high to call it sessionable, or you're, you're going to have, <laughs> where you're going to have, you know, multiples. Um, Cause for me, sessionable is, is four point something or below, but, but this one was very flavorful. And very enjoyable. I actually would do another pint of this. For me to say that Good. about an IPA is a, is a big deal. You just, you don't like a piney IPA. I do not. I have come to learn this about you and I well, feel the you same. you don't either. Yeah. Citrusy IPA is where it's at for me. When somebody told me there were beer slushies on the menu at this uh, place, I, I just, Rev, Rev Brewing, I was like, well, now we have to have it. It is unique. It is unique, and it was. It looked like a vanilla or a yellowish kind of beer slushy. It looked like a pina colada coming out. <sighs> yeah, it wasn't like. Don't think of it as like slurpy or icy. When when I think slushy, I think of that. Mm-hmm. Not, it's not like that. It's it, it looks more like a frozen cocktail beverage. Yeah, it, it absolutely. When they brought it out, I'm like, that's a pina colada. Yeah, it looks like a pina colada. Maybe it's a little bit more yellow. Didn't it even have an umbrella? I believe that they brought it out with an umbrella. No. No. Oh, it was a straw. Not. An oh, umbrella. yeah. No, an umbrella. It had an umbrella. Yes. Oh. And there. a straw. There you there go. There it is. Both of them. So a beer slushy arrives at your table. It's it's yellowish white in color completely not see-through and it has a straw and an umbrella in it i just i loved the glass because it had a rabbit on it but it it's called you want a piece of me the the wanna bana if i'm i'm probably butchering this guanabana guanabana lactose okay okay do we know what guanabana is? I don't think so. I didn't ask because I was just flabbergasted and I kept trying to taste this and taste this and taste this and go, I just don't know. Guanabana uh, is a fruit. I don't know what my what what I'm, I'm experiencing at all. A guanabana is also known as a soursop. A soursop? A soursop. Okay. Yes. And it's a fruit. Well. And it is actually sold as a fruit juice oh, a fruit paste. Like, a, like a sour fruit juice i'm guessing it's sour i from based on the name ba- and based on the drink that we had yeah because it was tart 
let's talk about this thing because it's not what it, whatever we were thinking. This was not it. Okay, it was tart. It was not like a pina colada. There was no coconut that I got. There was no. It, it was tart, a little bit carbonated, a little bit creamy. Every time I looked at it, and every time I was sipping it from the straw, I was expecting pina colada flavors, but I got tartness and sweetness, sweetness at the same time. And it was a beer, but it was a cocktail mix drink experience. I don't even know what to say. The my favorite comment was actually from one of the members of the Runcation Nation who was hanging out with us there. Yes. And Kelly, Kelly says, said, my mouth is so confused. I know. <laughs> and when you, when you read up on the, on the soursop fruit, it says the taste is often described as a combination of strawberry and apple with a little citrus mixed in. Ooh, that's not well. a horrible description. Actually, it's a, it's, it's, it tastes like a lot of mixed fruit. Yeah. All at once. Yeah. And it's tart and sweet. It is the weirdest thing. That said, I liked it. I liked it. I like it was unique. It did not taste terrible. It was just unexpected and I didn't know what to do. It, no. Like how to feel about it. But would you get it again? Yes. Yeah, see, because I would too. Because I still want to make sense of it. In my brain, I was like, uh, let's figure it out. That's and what I my did. brain was saying. And I didn't know. And they, I, from their website, their website lists something different now. So I don't know if they go through a rotation and change they do. things. They do. So I would be interested to go back and have the same slushy experience with a different combination of flavors from their beer selection. I would too. But if they were able to execute that and it's a, it's a flavor we're not accustomed to, it's a fruit that we're not familiar with. And we, and we all, everybody who tastes it is like, this is really good. It's really weird, but it's really good. Yeah. So Um, I would, I would do that again. That was fantastic. Yeah. Just strange. Now I want to seek out the fruit itself. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that I've seen it on like iron chef. Oh, those like battles. one of those, what are you going to do with this fruit? Ha ha ha. Oh, and you got uh, chopped basket or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like a, like an Alton Brown or, or, or Ted just laughing maniacally as the chefs are trying to figure out what, what to do with do? Th- this in a bag of Twizzlers. Yeah. So it was unique and it was a unique experience that we had to have. So we did, but then you ended up going with something a little more traditional. Yes. We both had. This, yes, I selected it because I was interested. I ordered it literally because you did. I'm like, oh, that sounds good. I'll have one of those too. I love a good lager and I love a good Mexican lager. Yes. So the Conejo. Yeah. Especial. 5% ABV, Mexican lager. So Mexican lagers tend to be very light in body, light Mm. in color. They tend to have a nice, very pleasant, bready flavor. Yes. And... They're a great beer to drink in warm weather and high activity days. This is a great go-to style of beer if you're going to be doing uh, yard work, if you're going to be out on the boat. It's a great post-run beer. And this is actually a, yeah, a great beer for post-run activity. I love that it came in like a wine glass type of glass. Yes. Well, because we had the size. You can get samples. Mm -hmm. There aren't flights. Oh, we didn't talk about that. Right. They don't do like a set price for flights. They Mm -hmm. just offer all their beers in either a taster Mm -hmm. or a full. So we just got a taster and it came in a wine glass looking deal. And I I like the light yellow color. It had ample enough carbonation. And those bready notes, that light, that flavor that you want to experience on a hot day. You like the, those styles I of beers. I love it. Like Mexican lager or a good German Pilsner. Oh, yeah. yeah that's not, you know, super bitter at the I end. I love that stuff. Yeah. So I would have this one again, and it was, it would be a good compliment to their pizzas. Oh, that is a great pizza beer. Yeah. yeah. I, in fact, just generally speaking, like I would probably opt for that because it's a, a milder flavor 
over the one that I initially had. I probably spirals in hyperspace. Yeah, and I'd probably want this during the meal with the pizza rather than the beer shake that I was the beer slushy that I was trying to make sense of. <laughs> I might have had that maybe as a second round or after we ate as Bingo. a desserty kind of thing. Me too. But then we had the ice cream. So I don't know. I I just had to have it all. But that said, everything that we had was amazing. Was fantastic. Uh-huh. And I didn't hear a single complaint from anybody at our table. No. Like nobody went, oh, this beer is horrible. Here, you want to try this? Nobody <laughs> did that for any of their beers. So we got really great feedback from the other members of the Runcation Nation who were yeah. there with us. So, so the meal and the beverages yeah. were fantastic here. Rev Brewing Bones and Bones Pizza. They are doing it right in the beaches of Jacksonville. Check them out. We will have links in the show notes. You've matured our palates. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> very much. And and I know you are are, are <laughs> such are, are so into the literary references. Sorry. You're a little partial, but yeah. those references to Lewis Carroll made everything taste at least five percent better. Yeah, go down the rabbit hole, people. Oh, if you're in Jacksonville. I see what you did there. Mm. All right, guys, next episode, we are going to be heading to the Donna Marathon Weekend 5K with the Runcation Nation crew. We're going to be covering all of that for you. So while you're waiting, it would be really great if you could head on over to Apple Podcasts and give us a rating and review. And you can also do this in iTunes on your PC. Yeah. If you've done it in the past and it hasn't been, it's been several months, please run over there and do it again. They do fall off over time. That really helps us get discovered. You'd be surprised at how helpful that really is. So we used to have a five star rating and now we have a 4.9 and I just want, I want more ratings. We need more ratings. And if you, <laughs> and if you left us that two star rating, cut, shoot us a message info at running drink.net. Tell, Tell us, us why and what we could do to improve. Yeah. So anyway, We'd appreciate a five-star. We'll take any of them, but yeah, we really. really appreciate a five-star. That said, though, guys, thank you so much for listening to us this week on this episode, for joining us on your long run, your commute to work, around the house, or wherever you are. I'm your host, Amy. And I'm your co-host, Dana. Stay safe and well, and we will accomplish, explore, and indulge with you really soon. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We're having another great year thanks to your support. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Run, Eat, Drink podcast. And on Twitter, we're Run, Eat, Drink pod. You can also give us a call at 941-677-2733 or send us an email at info at runeatdrink.net. Visit our website at runeatdrink.net and click on the subscribe link so you don't miss a minute. Find out how you can support the show at patreon.com slash runeatdrinkpodcast. Accomplish, explore, and indulge right along with us. We'll talk to you next time.